Hello, I'm the owner of a Picard and welcome to beautiful Limousin France. These two cars here are separated by just four years. This is a 1959 2CV AZLP and this is a 1963 AZA mixed. And today I'm going to take you through both of these cars and show you the differences. This car belongs to my friends Amandine and Guillaume, who also own Dudu, which is a, the 2CV6 that I've done a similar video to this on, where I compared Jolene and Guillaume's 1988 2CV6 to Jolene being 1963. So if you want to see the differences between that and the 2CV6, there's a video for that as well. But just as last time, we're going to start at the back. So 1959, you have these lovely little red lights, the same as Jolene, but they have glass centers, a painted number plate just the same, and a center light. You also have the much thinner steel bumpers with little aluminium strips, and you have a lovely Citroen badge. Now, these old Citroen badges are some of the coolest one, well, I think one of the coolest badges for any car ever made. They're incredibly art deco font and uh, very, very cool. And this is just a standard, has it locked it now? <laughs> this is, whoop, this is just a standard 2CV boot, so you've got your space for your back wheel in the back. Tetanus is a rolling barn find, exactly as she left the garage in which she was kept for many, many years. Uh, Tetanus also has 400 millimeter wheels because Michelin used to have a thing about metric wheels. They wanted to convert the entire world to metric and they thought, well, we do the widths in metric, so let's do like the diameter in metric. Whereas later on, they went to 15 inch wheels. And Tetanus being September of 1959 was actually one of the last two CVs produced with 400 millimeter tires. Um, and 400 millimeter wheels. It makes her have a much better ride because it's almost a 16 inch wheel, so it's a bigger wheel, it's a bigger tire. It also means that the tires are incredibly expensive. So a lot of 2CV owners that own 1950s 2CVs have swapped them out now for 15 inch wheels and keep their nice 400s in the garage. The side light is this beautifully little aerodynamic side light that you can't really see much from. In fact, Tetanus is quite difficult to drive behind um, and, and see like indicating braking and stuff because she is before restoration. Uh, Guillaume's going to do a very delicate and sensitive restoration on, um, on Tetanus and she's gonna look gorgeous afterwards, but uh, he hasn't had the workshop space and he hasn't had the time or ability, but luckily he's just moved here to cruise. Um, and so, he now will be able to have a garage and he will now be able to have space in which to uh, restore his beautiful car. But it's staying patina, I think. He, he loves the patina of it. Also here at the rear, something that you can't see on a 1960s car, but you can see on a 50s car, is that it has a painted fuel cap and in that painted fuel cap is this rod. This rod is your fuel gauge, which Actually, it's quite a good idea because the fuel gauge on Jolene doesn't really work that well, being 6 volts. Um, 2 CV fuel gauges aren't the best anyway, they aren't the most accurate things in the world, which is why I keep a jerry can in the boot. But um, it was a, an old custom of a Frenchman to keep like an old beer bottle full of fuel in the boot just in case, because then it'll get you to a fuel station. It, just in case the, uh, even the fuel gauge drops to zero. I've had it on like half bump. For three days and then all of a sudden it goes to nothing so this actually to have a dipstick where you can just pop it out and just see how much fuel you've got it's actually quite an quite an ingenious little invention and incredibly simple and this is never going to break 
Okay, so at the back on a 2CV mixed, you have a hatchback. This was a very rare option for the mix. It's also got a folding back seat. Um, this is Jolene, my everyday driver. We have chunky bumpers with an aluminium strip. I've also got a wood floor in the back because it means I can put muddy wellies in. And the rear lights are completely plastic and have a plastic lens in them. We also have a center light. Now, 1963 was also the first year for the AZAM. Um, the AZA stands for AZ Advanced and AZAM stands for like it's like the luxury version which actually Guillaume's AZLP is the most luxurious of the 1950s cars um, the AZAM was the thing that replaced it AZAMs they're easy to spot because they don't have this centre light they have a light in the side of the uh, red lights and on the side of Jolene we have these big square clear fronted indicators which first started in uh, 1963 for this year After, before this you still have a new front end but you've got the the beautiful 50s indicators these might not be the prettiest things in the world but they are very visible and they work on the interior we have of course suicide doors we have the same steering wheel but that's kind of where the similarity ends we have a speedo up here rather than here and this knob controls the windscreen wipers the windscreen wipers on earlier 2cvs are driven by the speedo cable and so this little knob literally tightens a screw onto the cable and then it sh then it uh, powers your windscreen wipers off your speedo cable as you drive along which is very cool same front and center you have a jaeger amp meter this tells you how much power your dynamo is making um, i check my dynamo once a week ish just to make sure it's making the power it should be making but that's a very very handy thing to have you have the starter and the choke and of course you have early button pedals later 2cvs have top hinge pedals but all early 2cvs have these awesome little button pedals and a big shelf this bracket here is where the indicator switch normally lives you also on these early cars get lovely little sun visors that aren't giant and uh, and block your view entirely <laughs> like they do in mine which is why i remove them and you get a very small petite little mirror and that's about it it's very simple but it's all that you need And now sat inside Jolene, 1963 feels like a much more modern place. We have a dashboard for the first time ever in a 2CV. And behind this lump lies electric windscreen wipers. Even though Jolene is not the top model, she came equipped from factory with electric windscreen wipers, although she's still six volt. Behind the gauge cluster, well, in the gauge cluster, we have an engine light. We also have a dynamo light. We have uh, that the dynamo light replaces the um, the amp meter. We now have a speedo here rather than mounted up here because we no longer have uh, engine-driven windscreen wipers, and we have a fuel gauge. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. We have our lights mounted in the same place we have our indicators instead of being mounted here on the stalk but other than that it's pretty much the same we still have our nice suicide doors catches are still in the same place these seats are not the original ones that i'm currently sat on Jolene came with the same bench seat that um tetanus has this is a later ami 6 bench seat the Azam version of this car, the most deluxe version, came with a sliding seat, but it's it's very different to this one. It's like on a, a box section chassis and it has a, a, a very different rolling mechanism. Whereas this is the much more simplified Ami 6 seat, which has an adjuster that's just in the middle there. 
Um, we also have, instead of the choke, the choke is now in the center and the starter motor is here. Although mine's backwards because I fit a, a different starter motor. Right, let's move on to the oiler bit. Under these cars, the chassis, running gear, steering, uh, friction damper shock absorbers are pretty much identical. They both are pretty much the same under the skin. Put both. In tetanus, oh, it's like a cave. Oh, it echoes. <laughs> In tetanus, we still have a six volt battery, but tetanus is positive earth electrics, not negative earth electrics. We also have an aftermarket horn, um, and we have the same, roughly the same gear gearbox, but it's got very different ratios in it. And these two cars do not have CV joints. So they have a turning circle, much like a container ship. Um, they're literally like early two CVs have the turning circle of a large four wheel drive. Um, much very similar to the Unimog I was driving the other day. Both engines are 425 CC, but this is a 12 horsepower engine which means it has a smaller carburetor. It has a cast intake manifold, as you can see with the veins on it. Um, and it has um, much lower compression and it has a different oil filler on it. But other than that, and it being positive earth, they are very similar engines. It's just an evolution. Over in Jolene, our spare tire is not in our boot. It's under our bonnet, so I'll just lift this up. And we have a 425cc engine with a much chunkier intake manifold and exhaust. The exhaust runs down the front just the same. And this is an 18 horsepower engine. So it has a slightly larger carburetor, it has slightly higher compression, um, very similar gearbox. This is a negative earth electrical system, which means it's just a little more powerful, a little more reliable. And um, moving on to the headlights, I have a lovely pair of Sieb headlights, whereas Guillaume and Amundine on their car have a beautiful pair of Marshall headlights. Um, they both function in pretty much the same way. Marshalls are just very, very pretty. Moving down from that, the bonnet catches on these cars are very different. Tetanus being a, just release this. Tetanus being a wrinkle bonnet car has a bonnet catch, which I hope I did this right. Mm -hmm. They're laughing at me off screen because, there we go. Right, it actually has a physical catch here, not a spring catch like Jolene has. So if I drop mine down, my car just has a spring catch and catches like that. We have a tiny and very pretty bumper that doesn't do a very good job as a bumper, but it's very aesthetically pleasing on the 1950s car. And we have a much chunkier bumper on the 1963. 63 was the first year of this bumper and even with the more modern front end which was from 1961 the skinny bumpers carried on but the gap in the overriders in the early 60s cars is actually wider than it is on the 1950s cars so you can't just get a 50s bumper and pop it on a 1960s car on to the two biggest differences between these cars and that is the front ends. The front wings of a 1950s car have, if you'll, if you'll move around here, right, they have a much more rounded profile. They're incredibly pretty. They're almost beetle-like. Um, they're much softer and you have this gorgeous wrinkle bonnet. 
and this being an AZLP has an aluminium strip down the centre. In 1963, we have a much tighter radius on the end of the wing. Uh, it's a tough thing to see until you put a 1950s wing on a 1960s car or a 1960s wing on a 1950s car. But basically, the 50s wings are much more rounded and this just kind of goes up and then drops off. In the center of all that, we have a 1960s bonnet. This bonnet first started in 1961 and it's a much simpler affair whereas the 1950s bonnet is a much more complicated thing to produce and I'm sure it was done to cut costs because the 1950s bonnet is made in many more pieces it has strengthening struts underneath it has an automatic bonnet prop it's actually a really beautifully made thing whereas the 1960s bonnet is it's a bit floppy um, and that's simply because it's stamped in one piece and then the uh, catch is added for the, the bonnet release and I'm not gonna do that with uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that with tetanus because I don't want to hurt her but it's a much more it's a much stiffer shell it's a much stiffer better made thing and it's made in many more parts but oddly enough the louvers in the side are integral so the bonnet and the louvers are one piece whereas on Jolie she has these top pieces here which are not connected see and they are adjustable with little allen keys um, and they make getting the wings off slightly more complicated it's another three screws everything on a 2cv is three screws so yeah my wing mirror is not original that's a 2cv6 wing mirror uh, my car didn't come with wing mirrors neither did gums although there is a tiny little kind of moped mirror that attaches to the uh, or the window hinge it allows you to have a little wing mirror that is better than nothing and allows you to have some sort of rear visibility. These two cars, just four years apart in history, are so different from each other, but they're also incredibly simple and incredibly similar. Of course they are, they're the same car, they're both two CVs, but they both have a unique character to them. And that's because even though they're just four years apart in history, they were made for very different people. The two CVs of the 1950s were marketed as rural transport. They were a thing to replace a horse and cart or a donkey or literally just a way to get to market. They were a lifeline for rural France and they had to be as simple and tough as possible. 1960s two CVs also had to be simple and tough as possible, but for a very different reason, because they were marketed to young people as tools for exploration and freedom. It was the start of the cool 1960s France that we all see. Kind of, this was the post-war austerity and this was the brand new start. And both of these cars get an amazing reaction when you drive them down the road here in France, especially together. People's faces light up. You see old people, like little old pensioners, light up because these cars mobilized France after the war. These cars were freedom and they are very different and they are very similar and they are both incredibly beautiful. I've really enjoyed making these videos where I compare Jolene to one of Amandine and Guillaume's cars because many people think that from 1948 until 1990 the 2CV never changed but it's not true the 2CV changed as much as the people that drove them. You know 52 years of production saw many different generations create strong relationships and strong bonds with these cars. These cars represent more than just an engine, four tyres, a gearbox and some seats and a steering wheel. These cars to many people in France represent 
freedom. They represent their grandma's freedom. They represent the cars that took people to hospital when they were pregnant. They, they took people to market so they could make their living. Many people I've met like earned a living by fixing these cars. The amount of love that there is in France for these cars is amazing. I was once approached when I was, oh, she wasn't broken down jolly, she was having a, an unscheduled rest. Um, I was approached by a 90 year old lady who told me that I was driving a French national monument and I should never forget it. And Tetanus is very much a French national monument, as much as if not more than Jolie. So I want to say a massive thank you to Amandine and Guillaume for letting me borrow their car for a little while uh, and make a video with it and so I could share it with all of you lot. So thank you all for watching, please be awesome to each other and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.